I'm Lee Spencer. I'm with Mike Kelly. Last night when you came off the pit box, you said that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. had taken you to a place you had never been before and you were going to take him back. Where is that place that he took you? Uh, to a place of confidence, right? To a place of believing in, in ourselves and each other. And um, when I got hooked up with him early in our, in my, earlier in our career, man, we, we were able to do a lot of incredible things that I hadn't accomplished. And I, I, didn't, I didn't believe that was possible. And uh, we won our first championship. And then to come back the next year and win a bunch of races and another championship, it just, it just solidified that for, to me that it wasn't a fluke. And uh, I watched him go through some tough times. And, and we both had. We, you know, it's... It, it, it wasn't the best of years, the last couple of years that I crew chiefed. And, and I kind of was not had walked away from the sport, but I'd walked away from, from wanting to be a crew chief. And given this opportunity, I wanted to back with Ricky. I really, I really wanted to challenge myself and push myself to get us back to where we were competitive and get us back to where we had the respect in the garage that we once did. It's a, it's a humbling sport. You, uh, you can get to the top and realize that there's everyone in this job is trying to get to where you're at and um, it doesn't it doesn't take long to be forgotten or or that your your days are just behind you and um, I just I just it's like one old one old guy just wanting to see one more one more shot at it and uh, for him it was it was a big big day to be able to get him back to victory lane. Can you talk about how he's grown and how you're in this new chapter is trying to shake the reputation of Recky Stenhouse. I mean, and, yeah. and you talked a little bit about it last night after the win, but at breakfast you talked about a little bit different driver. You talked to Tab Boyd about what you saw, the the intel he was giving back, you know, what he wanted to know, and that that's certainly a sign of maturity that any crew chief wants to see in a driver. Yeah, for sure. You know, we when you are at a pivotal point in your career where the next season isn't guaranteed, right? <clears throat> Some decisions have to be made, and some thought processes have to change. That, that, or or you'll be you'll be forgotten. You know, a lot of drivers talk about they retire, but really a lot of them get retired because they don't get hired. Um, so during this off season, we spent a lot of time talking. I, I remember when he was on his honeymoon. We we talked every night. We we text. We wrote messages back and forth to each other, and said basically, look, man, we're, we're for both of us. We're both agreeing to do this together. It's sink or swim right now, and uh, he bought into that immediately. He started working harder and harder and harder. I'm not saying I'm, don't take this wrong. I'm not saying he didn't work hard before, but he worked hard differently. He looked at it from a different aspect. It wasn't just about holding the right foot down and and turning the corner. It was from a mind's perspective of it. I think um, so. Yeah, even last night during the race, I, I was alluding to earlier. Man, it was. 10 laps to go and he was asking the right questions he wanted to know who was behind him how big the gaps were behind him and how big those gaps were behind those guys so he could set himself up and uh put himself in the right position at the end and that that actually you know it caught my ear when he was doing that that i, I told myself that he's he's turned on right now and this is this is going to be an opportunity tonight five years without a win that's a long time that can really be brutal on a driver's confidence how did you kind of you know, the fact that you guys are friends, that kind of complicates it a little bit, right? But it also gives you good, great insight into your buddy. How did you get him from what might have been a dark place to believing in himself that he, he could win again? Just, just by showing him the facts. You know, last year he did something that that organization, our organization, has not done in 29 years. I think he had five top tens in a row and in a, in a system with a new car and and I showed him that, look, man, on, on given days when you are given given equal equipment, and that's always been my Ricky Stenhouse mantra, is that if I give him equal equipment, I don't care. I respect Kevin Harvick, and I respect Kyle Busch, and I respect Joey Logano with everything that they are, the champions that they are. But I also raced against them with him, and we would beat them. And, and it was a great camaraderie back then with those guys. So I know if I do my job and this team – is able to give him the cars that he needs and I saw it a lot last year that he will he will contend with them and uh, getting his head to believe that again and know that know that he can 
is a big part of it, right? It's when it doesn't happen for a long time, it it, you start to question, and you get you start questioning yourself, and I just didn't want them to have to do that anymore. Speaking of the new car, is it really the great equalizer still that a single-car mom-and-pop team can go out and race against the biggest organizations in NASCAR? <laughs> That's a great question, and uh, my dad asked me that same question, and I tried to explain it to him the best way I could. I'm, I'm no engineer and all, but I tried to, I try, I'll just try and explain it like this. If me and you were to go look for gold in the river and nobody had been there, it's easy for me and you to both find the big pieces of gold right away, right? But as that water gets picked through and the pieces get smaller and smaller, the teams that have more people and more resources will continue to find gold and the people with 40 people will, it'll be harder, right? So this this card always will let us know that we have the same parts and pieces and that's probably the biggest checkbox right we were in a we were in a sport that was not heading in a good direction with the amount of money we were spending on r d and i lived off that right my role for a couple of years was to spend every hour i possibly could in the wind tunnel spend every hour i possibly good could on machines that twisted metal and and metal that deflected in on the racetrack and based on temperature and, and the amount of money it was like an arms race um, this car stops that. This car says that Tad and Jody and Gordon can have the exact same race car as Rick Hendrick and, uh, and those guys. So, yeah, that does change that. And I think, I think for a long time it will. It, you'll see, we'll continue to see stories like this. Finally, um, we also talked last night a little bit about your first Daytona 500. There was such an absolute pall over that day, one of the darkest days in NASCAR history. Even though you won the race with Michael Waltrip, we lost the greatest, in my opinion. And mine. Um, <laughs> and mine. Um, the greatest champion that we ever had. The, you know, one of the greatest owners. We, I mean, the list goes on and on, right, Mike? Last night, did you finally get to give winning the Daytona 500 the celebration it deserves. Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> no, for um for 20 some years you you come down here and uh <clears throat> you drive through that tunnel and every day you you just dream about it and and we we did in 2001 we won but you couldn't celebrate. You couldn't celebrate. We lost our boss. We lost our friend. The sport lost an icon that will never be replaced. <clears throat> and uh, my career looked like it was going to end where <clears throat> Before it started? Yeah, you didn't think you'd get to ever celebrate here. And uh, last night was huge. And it, it, it didn't, me and Ricky talked about this morning, it was amazing last night. We celebrated and it was great to be with your sponsors, but you're busy, 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 busy and enjoying it. Um, it hits you this morning when you walk in here, and it's, it's probably hitting right now. Mike, I, I really appreciate your time. Wish you nothing but the best. I'm happy to see you finally back with your buddy, with a team that everyone cares about each other, and look forward for what's to come. Yeah, I appreciate it, and it is. It's a, it's a fun time. Um, we got work to do to uh, continue this. We, we just, we're trying to lay a foundation and earn the respect in the garage that we all want, and that's, that's my goal. Appreciate your time. Thanks.